Peeps, KP here, back with another episode of Clan Generator. We are continuing on with Sage Clan. I'm filming this right after the last one so that I don't get too, too distant because it's hard for me to get back into the characters. So last time we left off, um, Golden Paw is now an apprentice. Oh, let me look at him. Golden Paw just became an apprentice a couple moons ago and then right before we left, it's not here, but right before we left, Sedgepath and Pine Mask both became warriors. Super cool. Also, I said in the last episode I was gonna try and fix Broken Shell's thing so that she was no longer an elder, since she's pretty young. And I know for a fact that my girl, despite missing a leg, can handle herself. Um, she's back as a warrior, although if anything super risky comes up that there's no way she could handle it, then she's going to choose retreat just because she's gonna play it safe. I mean, she's already been hit by a car once and lost a leg and has gotten in a fight with at least two otters. I think, I think she's pretty cautious. Your patrol has a disagreement and they look at Met to settle the dispute and they manage to skillfully smooth over any disagreements. So Quixie decides to ask Pine Mask um, to help them move out the old moss so that they can gather some more. So that seems like success, so that they get one herb. We're gonna go to one to the next thing. Okay, your patrol catches the scent of a fox, but is it red or gray? The gray vixen they track down smells of milk. She's clearly double the weight of any of the patrol and all of it muscle. They meet her eyes squarely and leap to attack. Sage Clan does not tolerate sharing their territory with foxes and they work together to drive her off. So it's a success and nobody got hurt. I'm super glad because Cricketfoot and Red Snow are both on this patrol, but it looks like that fox was Frego. Okay, your patrol hears distant howling and wonders whether to investigate the noise they're going to. They discover a wolf is eating from its kill. This is a predator they cannot fight. The patrol decides to return to camp and re report the intruder to the leader. Or perhaps they can return later for the little fresh kill that they left behind, so that's not a successful patrol since they had to leave behind their kills. So Broken Shell decides to tell Bumble Creek about a vision that they had with Starkman. Bumble Creek takes Broken Shell aside, giving them the full benefits of their seniority and experiences, and they discuss Broken Shell's vision, and both of them work together to discover the vision's meaning. So that's a successful herb. So they caught 20 pieces of prey, plus the 14 that were left over, and they still only have 16 cats, so I'm not even going to worry about adding that up at the moment. So that means they have four left over from the 20, meaning that they have 16 pieces of prey. Meaning, honestly, we don't have to do any patrols next moon. So I'm gonna go through the cats real quick and let you know if I see anything. Okay, so out of the living cats, the only interesting thing I saw was that Townstar caught the scent of a fox earlier, but we already knew that there was a fox in the territory, so. I'm gonna look into Starkland, um, but first I just wanted to point out that Alistar wants to give a warning to Gold Golden Paw. I don't know what that could be. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, Ember Spirit also wants to warn Cricketfoot, and Sparrow Mouse um, knows what Skimmit's secret is and wants to sh tell some cat. So that's about it that's going on in there. We're gonna go on to the next moon. So Yellow Petal earns a scar protecting the leader. Find Strike wishes to retire. Oh my goodness, Red Snow and Bramblebrook are killed by a gang of rogues. That is wild. That is wild. Okay, let's look at Yellow Petal's scar. It's like a little one right there. So I imagine they were protecting their leader from the rogues. That just makes sense logically, so we're gonna go with that. She's staring off into space. She's probably like, whoa, we were doing so good and somehow I lost two of my cats. Red Snow is finally reunited with her precious baby, Mouse Kit. And then Bramblebrook, who's been in the clan for a while now, is also dead, killed by a rose. Caught me off guard for sure. We are going to just empty out the fresh kill. I'm going to go through the cats actually real quick and then we'll empty out the fresh kill and just go on to the next moon so that we can do an extra moon this episode. 
Bumble Creep saw Blossom Rapid in a dream warning them about something. They're not quite sure, but this isn't the first time Bubble Creek has been warned by Blossom Rapid about something. So other than that, there was nothing too interesting. Blossom Rapid was thinking about how um, other messages to send, but that was about it. So we're gonna go on to the next moon. Um, and such path realizes that she cat doesn't describe how they feel anymore and then rock shade died yikes hold on let me fix the fresh kill pile real quick it's also green leaf so we're gonna put the herbs back down to zero infected wounds which i mean they lived a really long life they've been in the clan for this entire time they have done a lot of things. They were the second deputy because Talon Star was the first ever deputy. So that's pretty crazy. We're gonna go on to patrols now since we're at a fresh kill. Bumble Creek has attended to one of their premier jobs. They have to go to the burial grounds. They ask for such path to assist them and they do their tasks. I'm gonna count that as a success so they get one fresh, one fresh piece of herb. They catch the scent of fox. Um, they find that it's eating a deer carcass, they outnumber the fox, and the fox doesn't want to really fight, so they get the deer. So we're going to send the last three out on patrol. There is a mighty crash, they look around wildly, and is blotted out by a tangle of heavy falling branches. Cricketfoot is freed, unharmed, and they comfort each other. So I'm going to say two cats were successful on that patrol. Crickerfoot was probably in shambles, so she probably didn't catch anything. And we're going to go back to camp, save, and I'm going to edit the fresh kill stuff. So they caught nine pieces of prey. We have 13 cats. So we're going to roll for four cats. The first cat we're rolling for is Sedgepath. And they got an 11, so they are perfectly fine. Next cat we're rolling for is Firehawk. They got a 10 so that they're fine. Next cat is Broken Shell. They got a 17 so they're fine. And lastly, Talonstar. Talonstar got an 8 so they are also fine. So everybody is okay. We didn't have to use up their herb. That was the first time in a little while that these cats have had to roll. Which is pretty crazy. We're going to go on to the next moon. Nothing significant has happened. Some just small relationship things, but nothing too crazy. So we're gonna look at our cats real quick. Wipa wants to warn Sedgepath about something. Other than that though, no one else is doing anything interesting, so we're just gonna go right into patrols. So Quickseed brings Cricketfoot with them to look for a lungwort, and they are able to successfully gather what they needed. Such path suggests this might be a good chance for the cats to practice new hunting techniques. Everyone has a nice practice. Something skitters across the leaf litter, catching the patrol's eyes. A little lizard. That's cute. The lizard drops its tail. Broken Shell dives for the tail, and Talon Star pounces for the lizard. Surely that counts as two catches. Um, neither of them care much. It's just a happy afternoon of hunting. That's kind of cute. It's especially really cute considering um, Talonstar was Broken Shell's mentor. So I'm gonna roll for prey and edit the herb pile. So they catch 19 pieces of prey, meaning that they have six left over. It's pretty cool. And we're gonna go on to the next moon. And it looks like Golden Fur is now a warrior. That's super cool. Look at him, he's gorgeous absolutely stunning i'm gonna go send them on patrol they come across a small dog i'm gonna proceed they face up claws out they attack and drive the creature away so that's a success bumble creek and quickseed are gonna go out together and they're trying to interpret a star clan vision and they seem to be able to do that so that's two herbs i have encountered a porcupine bristling its quills they examine the porcupine, eventually deciding they couldn't risk the potential of injury it would cause. Broken Shell suggests this might be a good opportunity to practice fighting techniques with their son. And they both have a good practice. So I'm going to count up the fresh kill real quick. 
So they cut 21 pieces of prey. They still only have 13 cats, so that they have eight left over plus the six in their thing. So that's 14 pieces of prey left over. They're doing really good. And they have two new pieces of herb. So we're gonna save, we're gonna look through the cats real quick. And the only thing interesting we saw was that Gold Whisker wants to send a message to Talonstar. Other than that, there wasn't anything too interesting, so we're gonna skip this moon, and then I think we're gonna end the episode. And Yellow Petal is injured after messing with a too late object, and Firehawk will always love Bramblebrook, but they've decided to move on since their mate is now dead. Yellow Petal, you need to stop getting into danger. You look awful. I guess you'll have something cool to talk about when there's new kits in the clan. Like, look at these. I got these from battling a random metal object I found. A little weirdo. And let's quickly see how Firehawk is feeling about it. He's feeling content. Um, so, he's gotten over his mate's death and he's decided to move on with his life. And see how Golden Fur, they're staring off into space. So yeah, that was a pretty eventful, that was a pretty eventful episode. I'm going to end it now and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye!